The cycle of cringe is a very interesting cycle to observe. Back in the day, like 15 years ago, when all of this metalcore stuff was happening, all of this post-hardcore stuff was happening, it was so clearly cringe. And as time goes on, what's bad becomes good, what's good becomes bad, and what comes bad becomes so bad it's good again. And that cycle of cringe is something that we need to examine today. We gotta jump back in time and we gotta examine some old school metalcore slash post-hardcore music videos. Hey, how's it going? I'm the internet's most ruthless gatekeeper and the planet's most entertaining human being. I am the satirical miracle known as Dan Frampton. Thank you so much for kicking back with me here today. Leave a like on the video to get it boosted. Subscribe if it's your first time here and join the channel to become a member of the Secret Society. You can get the Esquila Grind set up. And without any further ado, let's just pull up the internet here. I have about nine or 10 music videos that we are gonna watch. We're gonna see if that cringe cycle rings true with these examples over here. Are these examples so bad it's good? Because all of these things that I have pulled up are things that I absolutely hated when they dropped. And every time I revisit them, I don't really enjoy them. But are these things so bad they're good? I thought the first and best place to start is with Abandon All Ships for a couple reasons. That band name alone just encapsulates this entire era in a way so perfectly. Abandon All Ships. Ships. Now, are you familiar with this band, this Abandon All Ships band? They're basically like a Canadian reality show type band. Back in the day, like 13, 14, 15 years ago, it says 13 years ago here, there was a show on Much Music called Disband. All one word, Disband, and it was hosted by the guy from Treble Charger, and the whole thing was about finding the next band, okay? And Abandon All Ships was one of those bands. Now what I remember about Abandon All Ships is that they brought in a bunch of synths, they brought in a bunch of like keyboards and that kind of thing, maybe a bunch of auto-tune, and it didn't really go over well with me back in the day. But I'm gonna get this thing going here, it's called Mega Wacko 2.1, and we're gonna see if the whole cringe cycle is true. Did it become good, did it become bad again, and did it become so bad that it became good again? Let's see. Abandon all ships. Oh yeah, this will be reaction video style. There will be tons of pausing, there will be tons of jumping around. If you want to watch these music videos, just type them into the search bar and watch them for yourself. But right now, let's do this thing. Oh, I just looked at my monitor. It looks like I forgot to wear a hat today. That's a thing. Bald Man Dan. Here we go. I hate this intro so much. If I was just gonna go off of this intro, I wouldn't think that this is gonna turn into like a metalcore type post-hardcore song. I would think more like LMFAO type stuff, but this sounds awful. None of what I'm hearing sounds good. This doesn't seem like it looped back around to being so bad, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's tasteless. That's absolutely trash. <laughs> oh my god. And everyone was trying to like capitalize off the success of Alexis on Fire in Canada, especially way back in the day. And this is them trying to take it into a new direction, I guess, where the clean vocals are done with a whole bunch of auto-tune. The screaming just comes in out of nowhere and doesn't sound like it belongs in the song. And then just get a bunch of synths on top of it. Wonderful. I think the guy's doing the double kick on the keyboard. <laughs> It's so cheesy. It's so corny, man. Anybody that puts like on a straight jacket and does a thing in a hospital for their metal videos, they're just doing the corniest thing imaginable. Oh, that production, man, it just like vibrates my brain in a very bad way. I can safely say that this is not so bad, it's good. This is just still very much trash. Rise Records, very famous for slopping out the trash. That's <laughs> peak crabcore. Did you see that crabcore dance maneuver that they were just doing? This thing? Okay, okay. 
I know what I said earlier, that it was not so bad, it's good. But this breakdown, this breakdown right here is so bad, it's good. This is something I would show somebody if I was like, here's an example of a hilarious breakdown. Fudge. Ha -ha! Fudge. <laughs> and that breakdown, as the outro is hilarious. What a songwriting choice that is, ladies and gentlemen. I can safely say though, not an enjoyable time. Please stay away from this at all costs, unless you're just gonna listen to the last like 20 seconds of it, because that is genuinely a funny time. Now, we can't do a video like this unless we're gonna talk about old Ronald Radkinson, okay? So we gotta talk about an old Ronnie Radke band and a new Ronnie Radke band, and we're gonna start with the old one, Escape the Fate. And I wanna watch this video over here, um, Escape the Fate, not good enough for truth in cliche. And the reason why I wanna watch it is because he looks exactly like Leafy did about 10 years ago <laughs> in the thumbnail, and that's a good time. But I have never been that big of a Ronnie Radke fan. I never thought that he did so many good things. I'm not here to say that I don't think he's talented. The guy can like play piano, and he can write some words sometimes that make sense some of the time. But most of the time, he is literally the most cringe individual on the face of the planet. And I'm not here to talk about the Ronnie lore, but we're gonna go escape the fate, not good enough for truth, in cliche. Oh, in ultra widescreen, very artsy. I just gotta say before we keep watching this, it is crazy to be watching YouTube videos that were put out 17 years ago. Man, I was around for when this was a brand new thing. And now for it to say 17 years ago, like it is possible for people to have started careers on this platform, worked their entire career, and retired by now. And we can use MatPat as an example of that. Okay, <laughs> this is so bad it's good. This is definitely so bad it's good with the ultra wide screen to get the cinematic effect going. You got Ronnie Radke coming in with that like pseudo emo voice. The way that it's shot, the way that it sounds, hilarious. That performance? <laughs> That's hilarious. That is some very funny stuff, Ronald Radkinson. I love that dude. The drums with the rose petals on it. Even funnier than the drums with the water on it. You gotta love that trope. What a great cliche. Not good enough for truth in this cliche, that's for sure. Ronnie Radke's always been about the cinematic music video. And it's so good to see that he's been doing that for 17 years now, at least. Give or take some time in prison or whatever. Oh man, he used to rock the soul patch too? Never realized that Ronnie Radke was a soul patch guy. 32 million views on this thing, by the way. You saw him just do that hair flip, right? That wasn't a callback back then. This is the era of the hair flip. Oh man, do I have to give Ronnie Radke flowers for being an innovator of the style? I kinda do, don't I? I kinda have to give him that amount of flowers out here on the channel, even though he is the most cringe man in the history of the internet. Yeah! He's definitely not the greatest vocalist back then. I will say he's gotten much better as a vocalist too. And again, I will say this, the way that the whole song was done clean, vocally at least, and then now they bring in the screaming later, I like that. That's a good way of bringing back and forth. Because normally in this style, you kind of go like call and respond with clean vocal, dirty vocal, or you do the clean vocal in the verse and the dirty vocal in the chorus, or vice versa. But right now, they saved it. They put that in the chamber, and now they're firing it full blast. For now. It is overly sentimental and super corny, I will say that, but it is hitting all the genre points in order for it to be that genre and to be like an example of the time. And these rose petals on the floor here are the most cringe, but most so bad it's good thing so far. And the fact that the word cliche is in the song title and the song is just filled with cliches, that irony is not lost on me. But we gotta keep going down this road of Ronald Radkinson and we'll do his newer band, Falling in Reverse, and we'll watch the song, I Am Not a Vampire. Oh. 
Oh, the synths and the haircuts. Oh my god, now we are so in the territory of so cringe that it might be funny. <laughs> we got fake nurses again. We're in a like a rehabilitation kind of medical facility. Gotta love that. Hopefully somebody's in a, in a straitjacket soon. Man, their outfits are so funny. So 80s rock and roll, Motley Crue kind of thing going on. This stuff is a callback. This isn't a product of the time. Oh, the song is catchy. The song is catchy. Oh yeah, they're not like metalcore or like post-hardcore anymore. This is just like... Cock rock times a million. <laughs> yeah, it's catchy as fuck. Oh man, he is the worst human being though. <laughs> These lyrics are fucking awful. <laughs> like even a difference of five years from the last song to this song, his vocal cords have gotten so much stronger. Like man's out here actually singing, bro. <laughs> that line is funny, especially because of his newer song, Zombified. He's not a zombie, but he feels like one. And the new one's like, I've been zombified. Whoa! It's not good, okay? There's no substance or quality here. It is very catchy, though, all right? So if I'm showing this to somebody, it is showing them this to laugh at, but also, I wouldn't judge you if you bopped your head a little bit, if you had a good time listening to this song. This is, this is kind of fun. And you have no idea how hard it is for me to say nice things about Ronald Radkinson. Look at this face over here, man. I have many videos on this channel with me being critical at the very least and being ruthlessly mean at the very most and here I am I think being the nicest I've ever been to Ronald Radkinson over here cuz this is this is a good time this is the best song so far My name is Ron, daddy, daddy should have never raised me on Black Sabbath this is the perfect amount of like kitsch this is the perfect amount of camp and I think it's self-aware. Is that Jeffree Star? That's def that's definitely Jeffree Star, right? <laughs> am I am I making that up? No, nah, that's that's Jeffree Star. <laughs> oh, this fucking solo with the pinch harmonics. God damn! Why haven't I ever seen the gloriousness of this song? This is wonderful. Like, I love that he's already outgrown the skinny jeans even back then. Like, his little love handles are hanging out and his little butt's been growing. Because he does have quite the caboose on him. <laughs> like, look at him over here. <laughs> Doing his little downward dog. The lady coming in and grabbing his love handles over there. His little pear-shaped torso. <laughs> I love it, dude. It ah! <laughs> he's wild for that one, bro. Oh my god. That's crazy. That is the most fun that I've had in this video, and I think that might be the last bit of fun that we're gonna be having in this video. There's no way that I could quantify the pain that I feel when I have to say nice things about Ronnie Radke, but we're here to feel pain listening to bad music. This isn't so much a throwback. This is one year ago, but this is some metalcore stuff that I just need to show you guys, okay? This is Cowboy Country Metalcore. This band is called Gideon, or Gideon? Gideon? Kind of like the, uh, the Twitch streamer turned God streamer or whatever. But here we go. It is very heavy, I will give it that, but the fucking snare is so tinny and the mix is so thin. This doesn't really have that metalcore vibe that uh, these other songs do. It doesn't really have that same like post-hardcore thing, not by a long stretch. Some really bad heavy metal nonsense. More power, more pain. I can't even do this right now, bro. I'm moving on to the next song. You don't fit. I don't know why you're even here, okay? Get out of here, Gideon. We gotta talk about a band that does fit 
this mold, we got to be talking about As I Lay Dying, which is another one of those band names like Abandon All Ships that just totally encapsulates this entire era in just a couple words, okay? Now, I've watched this whole video, and I've watched this whole video, but we're going to go back 15 years and watch this video called Confined by As I Lay Dying, and we're going to see if this is so bad it's good. Does this follow the cringe cycle theory? Remember when I was saying the rose petals on the drums was just as cringe as the water on the drums? We knew we would be getting to some water on the drums and we didn't need to wait very long. <laughs> okay, yeah, that is very bad. I am not enjoying that at all. We got a nice little gallop going. We got a nice little double kick going. <laughs> the wind and the rain and the water and the screaming. <laughs> Yeah, this is funny, but in a bad way. This isn't very entertaining, you know what I mean? At least Ronnie Radke, when he's going out there, he's out there making, like, mini films or whatever. Most bands just get into, like, a field, get into a warehouse, and, like, get a fake fog machine and some rain going and call it a day. This is as generic and as boring and as formulaic as you could possibly get. This definitely sounds exactly the way that you think that a band called As I Lay Dying would sound. They do the clean vocal, dirty vocal thing all right. I will say that that sounds pretty decent in this genre. There are some people that do it a lot worse. We've already heard it in this video. So in comparison, yes, it's very formulaic. It's very predictable, but it's at least well executed. I hate the video though. Like it is absolutely the most uninteresting, non-compelling video that I have ever seen. And all these heavy bands are all guilty of this. It's just them playing in a room like either dimly lit or overly lit. You know what I mean? It's not enough. I don't just need to see the band and hear the song and be like, oh, I get what this band is all about and I enjoy it. If I'm watching a video, there needs to be just a little bit of substance there. Like, what do you think the band was saying to one another when they watched this video back? Oh, dude, we look so sick all moist like that. Yeah. Like, it doesn't go any deeper than that. Oh, I, I'm glad that we got the director that knew how to shake the camera around like that. Wonderful. It looks so cool. Yeah. Damn, this shit is not fun to listen to or watch. It's not that it's, like, overly bad. It's just so formulaic and predictable. But you know what? I'm not done with bands playing in the rain, okay? As I lay dying, 1.6 million views. I bet that we could find a band playing in the rain that got a lot more attention than that. Oh, here we go. Here's another band that has a name that encapsulates the entire genre in just a couple words. Asking Alexandria. Look at this, in the rain. And like I said, oh, dimly lit down here. We're definitely gonna watch the rain one. 13 years ago, 52 million views, Sumerian Records, a prophecy. Let's go asking Alexandria. Ultra widescreen, we're getting artsy. Oh, a short film. Okay, get your popcorn, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Sundance. <laughs> You see how they set it up to be like a big film? They got it in ultra widescreen. They did this whole like title sequence or whatever. And here we go. Just a band playing in the field with some rain going. Uh, not exactly cinema. And those vocals are brutal. Oh, the layering of them is just awful. <laughs> what was he looking for? Okay, this is bad. This is awful. This sounds like shit. This looks like shit. This is absolutely trash. The last one, I used the word formulaic and predictable like three or four different times to describe it because it was just so mind-numbing. This is actively awful. 
You got the crab core going, down on the crab pose going back and forth. And if that wasn't enough, the camera is moving in crab core too. What's going on here, bro? And the ultra widescreen is just killing me. It's senseless. There's no purpose. This is just meandering nonsense over here. He's changed his vocal delivery and style three different times in this song so far, and it's 56 seconds in. Is that supposed to make me feel like he has like dynamic range or whatever? Nah, that just shows me that this guy can't focus. None of this sounds deliberate whatsoever. Okay, fourth vocal style. Let's do some death metal pig squeals next, I bet. I Bro, they have no idea what they're doing. They're just doing one thing and then the next thing and then over to the next thing. It's not even done in a way that's listenable. You know, bands like the Mars Volta kind of done that as well, but they do it in a way that's cohesive and fun to listen to. <laughs> Out of all the stuff we've listened to so far today, this is my least favorite. This is by far the worst. I would take that fucking Abandon All Ship song on repeat for a week before I even want to finish the rest of this song. A minute and 28 seconds here. And the only cinematic thing that we've seen so far is this person plunge into some water. <laughs> Fifth vocal style, all coming from the same guy, by the way. Holy shit, this sucks. Oh yeah, we had to get the synths going here too. Let's get some atmosphere. Oh my fucking god. Wow, dude. <laughs> this is so bad. We took everything from the last video. This like, as I lay dying one. And just took all the cringe elements of it and magnified them times a million in this video. The as I lay dying one is not even a little bit offensive in comparison. This video, this song, has everything. This hits every single point to be so bad, it's good. This song here, A Prophecy, asking Alexandria, we have a little bit left to go. This thing does the full cringe cycle and proves the theory. But here we go, this just got really quiet. We got some synths coming. We know that a very vicious breakdown is coming, right? Oh, there's the build. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. They just unironically just did everything in the genre in the most brutal and blatant way possible. They absolutely murdered the genre in one fell swoop. So I will say yes, this thing over here is so bad that it's good. Very entertaining, absolutely. Next up, we got a little band called Bleeding Through. Much less popular, but this band actually resonates more with me and, my, and like the time that I grew up. I will always get oh man, that sounds awful. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna listen to that. That is brutal sounding. Holy smokes, what an assault to the senses. Oh, I can't do that, bro. And by the way, it doesn't really totally 100% fit the style that we're looking at right now. But you know what does? I killed the prom queen. We're in a field, ladies and gentlemen. You knew we would eventually get a video in a field. <laughs> I love it with their cabs out there and everything. It's so funny. Like, where are they even plugged into? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I wonder if these bands have like a checklist of things that they need to make sure that they're hitting. Make sure that everybody is doing in the band in order to be this kind of band. In order to just nail this kind of thing so specifically from band to band to band to band. Field video. Let's go. Not a great vocalist. Not a great vocalist at all all and there are some bands in this style that are good okay that do this in a way that is actually enjoyable and i'll give you like a handful list at the end of the video but for right now let's keep cringing paint by absolute numbers 
There's no passion, heart, or energy found in this song whatsoever. They're just doing the thing to do the thing. And they couldn't even afford a rain machine. Gotta have a lady running for some reason. Where's she running to? What's she running from? Who knows? Just Those clean vocals are awful. The dirty vocals in this band are awful. The guitar tones are so washed out. What is going on here? Who is even I Killed the Prom Queen? <laughs> oh man, the crab chorus stances, the fucking windmill headbanging thing, the guitar things where they do this with their guitars. It's very funny stuff. Not original whatsoever. Alright, this is the most boring crap in the whole video so far. Now, I didn't do really any deep cuts throughout this whole thing. This is all bands that define the genre. And I will say that I Killed the Prom Queen is the biggest deep cut so far. Like, there probably is a good chance you haven't heard of I Killed the Prom Queen, whereas you definitely heard of all these other bands. But they are just hitting all of these marks from the era so specifically. Okay, so it looks like that girl is running from something. She's running from that car. And so far, she's been successfully outrunning a vehicle. <laughs> All right. Whatever you say, I killed the prom queen. And what is the color grading in this video? Gray, gray, and grayer? Was it shot on a toaster at 220p? This is the kind of stuff that makes me so glad that this style didn't last very long at all. <laughs> That's incredible, dude. Those windmill headbangs are incredible. Those guys' necks must hurt so much these days. All right, well, not really the most catchy ditty out there. Do you know what, though? We have one more little bit of nostalgia here. I set my friends on fire. Now I can tell you before we even dive into this that this is so bad, it's good. I do not enjoy this band as a band. I never enjoyed this band's music. But as content creators and as like nostalgia from the time 13 years ago, this hits absolutely every single mark okay i set my friends on fire collaborating with smosh yes the smosh incredible stuff let's revisit sex ed rock <laughs> oh man that's still funny to me all these years later in an ironic post-ironic and non-ironic way <laughs> Can anyone tell me what's happening to my body? That's amazing, dude. And unironically, better than the last like five things that we've listened to. <laughs> Anthony Padilla screaming in a metal band is something that I still need to this day. Very, very funny. As novelty music, as a meme, as internet content, this is absolute fire. Like those inflatable instruments and then just doing the crab core thing at a park, singing a song called Sex Education Rocks. That hits all the marks of funny. That isn't just so bad it's good. That is just... This video, this song, is the song to show anybody that you want to introduce to this era of music, okay? Oh my god, my brain is mush. I'm so glad that I ended it with that video, though. That was a good time. The Ronnie Radke thing, that was a good time. Everything else was a bad time. But I promised some bands that will provide good times in this genre. 
okay? Get your pencils ready and take notes. Devil Wears Prada, Alexis on Fire, Fuck the Facts, 18 Visions, From Autumn to Ashes, and Zayo. Okay, thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. That's crazy. Did you like the video yet? Did you put a subscribe on it? Okay, thank you so much for watching. And until my next upload, watch this other upload. Okay, see you later.